and welcome back to Dev Explaining channel. In today's video, I'll be running large language models within Raspberry Pi units and comparing the speed of uh, Raspberry Pi 4 and 5 that I happen to just acquire. So let's get started. Um, here is one Raspberry Pi. It's in a nice enclosure with a little bit of active cooling. It's Raspberry Pi 4 and I already made one video where I showed you how to install and uh, get it running. So we'll be using this for comparison today. And then I have another one. I went a little bit crazy with my YouTube influencer money <laughs> and uh, ordered a bunch of Raspberry Pi goodies. So this one is a little bit better. I've got the Raspberry Pi 5, active cooler, a nice aluminium uh, enclosure for it or casing. And uh, on top of that, I've got the uh, SSD hard disk uh, using uh, Pi, Pi uh, M2 hat. So pretty sweet deal. I intend to put a home assistant here, uh, combine it with some virtual AI assistant and make it control everything. Nothing can go wrong with that, right? <laughs> okay, so uh, those are the devices we'll be comparing today. And... Uh, for the comparison, uh, you have seen probably a few Olama videos already here, but let's recap mainly because it's quite fast and simple. So step number one is uh, to get the Olama running in both of these. And uh, if you go to the olama.com website, you can find macOS, Linux and Windows versions. So in my case, when I want to, to install it or update it, I just run this little crazy script. And by the way, every time you do something like that, it's a great idea to review the script before you run it, especially if running with sudo. So it's it's nice to know what you are actually running. But I've already done that, so I kind of reviewed the script, installed it, and if you want the latest version, you just run it again and uh, you, you update it as well. Okay, so that gets us all llama. Olama is a little bit like Docker for the large language models. Okay, then we need a few models uh, with Olama. So we go to the models page and we will be horrible disappointed. There's no super models here. These are all nerd models. So for the uh, for my favorite nerd models, uh, I've done some uh, things with Phi model earlier. So Phi is a nice uh, lightweight model by Microsoft. So I used to run Phi 3, now there's Phi 3.5, doesn't matter, we'll be running one of those today. So it's a 3.8 billion parameters model, a rather lightweight model. But I also want to try another one because uh, as you will see, this is still rather slow because Raspberry Pi, whether it's uh, 4 or 5, is going to be horribly slow running the large language models. It's probably almost the worst environment you can run uh, performance-wise. So uh, you really want to be running some uh, very kind of lean edge models. And uh, one option that's rather recent is uh, Llama 3.2. So you can get Llama 3.2 in one, uh, 1 billion parameters variant. And uh, I really, really like that one. It's not as clever as the other ones, but it's very sweet and very fast. It's very lean model to run. So if you're having an edge device like Raspberry Pi, where you want to be running some kind of intelligence, uh, then this will get you very kind of uh, uh, rapid and fast experience. Okay. And uh, we'll, we'll give it a spin today. We'll, we'll see how it works in both Raspberry Pis. Okay. So let's get to it. On the left side, uh, you can see my Raspberry Pi 4, that's the Pi top. And on the right side, uh, we have got the Home Assistant uh, Raspberry Pi 5. And both are nicely actively cooled and both are running in CPU only model. So we are not, uh, we are not going to kind of get any benefit out of GPU acceleration. And this is pretty much uh, the slowest it gets without any fancy. I haven't overclocked any one of these. So this is just stock Raspberry Pi that we are comparing. And for both of these, I have already set up Olama, so I don't need to do that again. So to run, uh, let's start with the slowest, uh, slower model of, uh, out of these two. So I'm going to run Phi 3 model here and Phi 3 model here. So let's start the models about the same time. 
And as I mentioned, uh, Olama is a little bit like Docker. So if this is the first time you would be running it, what would happen is that first it downloads the full model and it will take quite some time. But after that, when you run it again, you run it uh, locally, you load it. And as you can see, we are still loading the uh, Raspberry Pi 4 variant. Uh, and on the, on the right side, we are already there. So while it's loading, let's figure out a job for it to do. I've been liking haikus recently, so who doesn't like a haiku uh, on joys of software refactoring? And uh, we'll give some time for the Raspberry Pi 4. So I think the results here uh, are rather interesting already. I mentioned that uh, Raspberry Pi is about the kind of weakest hardware you could use to run this. So uh, when I did my previous video on Llama in Raspberry Pi 4, it was very, very slow. So you can already kind of get the idea that it's going to be somewhat faster. Not fast, but faster. Okay. So again, let's uh, ask the question and uh, start it about the same time. So Raspberry Pi 4 goes here and pipe goes here. And then we wait. So the speed of the model is uh, of course defined by the model itself, but it's also defined by the resources you have. You cannot probably hear this, but my active uh, cooling just kickstarted on both devices. So uh, the speed is basically responsible for, or performance is responsible for how many tokens we can handle per unit of time. So if you've got uh, good resources, uh, you are going to get faster output and uh, faster processing. And then if you have slower ones, uh, it will be painfully slow. So you can see that uh, you know, on the big scale, this was a simple question and simple answer. We got rather rapid uh, answers. Let's try something else just for the giggles. So let's do uh, generate some Python code uh, to calculate tax percentage based on income to be used as a starting point. Okay. And uh, again, this time I'm starting it on uh, Pi 5 side. So starting there, starting here. And again, we'll see how the code generation works. And by the way, um, this is a topic that I might uh, uh, dive into in some future videos, but I just uh, kind of figured out that uh, there are some new um, plugins you can use to inject uh, local local running models via Olama into, let's say, IntelliJ IDEA or VS Code Editor. So that's kind of intriguing because if I would be able to use local model uh, to benefits, I don't need any subscriptions or money. I know some of you are very interested in that, although for me, subscription to some ser service uh, typically uh, pays everything back in the efficiency that I get. But running a local model is also nice in another way that you get to keep your data. You, you can kind of guarantee that everything stays local. So you are not at risk of leaking some information. So you can use it as long as you kind of take care of your local environment, of course. But um, confidentiality and uh, costs are some things you can kind of play around running local model. And uh, I haven't done yet coding models locally with IDE plugins. But again, if you are interested, perhaps you'll see a video on that topic in the future. You never know. Um, as always, by the way, uh, if you're liking this video so far, remember to click those buttons, subscribe to my channel and drop some feedback drop some questions and drop some future video ideas. I love all that interactivity. Okay, so we can already see that uh, Pi 5 is uh, way faster. I can hear that it's faster because the active cooling is very active right now. And uh, we, have, we have generated about double the amount. Interestingly enough, answers are different on both sides, but I'm actually running the exact same model. So uh, any difference is more or less random at this point. But you can still see that the token generation is clearly, uh, let's say it's about uh, twice what we get from Raspberry Pi 4. 
And that makes sense because Raspberry Pi 5 has got about uh, double the uh, processing power in the CPU. Also, similar amount of increase in the GPU. The Raspberry Pi is about twice the speed. Now, uh, worth remembering is that it's also very, very hot. Uh, it, it gets hot earlier than Raspberry Pi 4, so you need good cooling. It will make some noise. And uh, I think one more thing to consider is uh, electricity. So it's going to be hogging a bit more electricity. So if you are looking for a nice server to run your models, uh, if you are not in hurry, Raspberry Pi 4 will surely do the trick. But if you want the best for Raspberry Pi level, then uh, you will be using a Raspberry Pi 5. Uh, that being said, uh, if you want more power, you can get it about uh, the same price by getting something uh, with a real GPU and perhaps a, a little bit bigger server, uh, an actual machine. There is a lot of uh, offerings on that side as well already. So this is by far not the optimal one, but I still like Raspberry Pis because they are very versatile little things and they're cute. They are cute as button. I mean, look at this little thing. This is my server running large language model like a pro here. <laughs> um, I think this is a little bit torture on the left side, so we'll, we are just going to call it quits. I'm going to control C out of this. Okay, so that was our little experiment number one, and I wanted to show you a real edge model next. So we tried the Phi 3, and Phi 3 is okay. I was actually running older version. That's okay as well, but let's try the Llama 3.21 billion parameters model because there is something interesting going on so let's go back here so llama run llama 3.2 and 1 billion variant and i've already pulled these images uh, locally so this should be rather fast so it should start a little bit faster than the phi 3 we'll see a few seconds on the right side still loading on the left side so as, uh, as we saw already, and by the way, active cooling stopped temporarily on both units. Okay, loading, loading, loading. Yeah, we are there. So you can see the same pattern, but the thing I really wanted to share with you is the kind of difference in overall speed on both units. So let's do the Haiku on choice of software refactoring, left side go, right side go. And we are already getting the Haiku, so that was only a few seconds. And even on the left side, we are getting much faster results. So if this was, let's say, virtual voice assistant, left side would still be too slow. Or anything else, it's probably I, it's, I think it's, we are starting to be close to OK speeds. Now, granted, the model is not as fancy as the bigger ones, but you will never get the fanciest ones running locally. So 1 billion is, in today's standard, is quite small, but it's still like ways ahead of what we could do in uh, four years back before all this uh, cool LLM stuff. OK, so let's do something else. Shall we uh, generate Python code? to uh, try to predict Bitcoin value in 2000, 2045. Let's do something crazy. So does Bitcoin go up? Uh, this is a trick question for the LLMs because obviously you cannot do such a thing. Oh, sorry, I accidentally released too fast. So let's do it again. I was saying that this is obviously a trick question. You cannot predict it. But let's see what the model is able to do. <laughs> that was a fast response. Interesting, interestingly enough, again, we are getting different one. So that's kind of effect of temperature variable. I'm running exact same model in two units. Granted, one is more powerful, but we got the shorter answer from the powerful one, and uh, the left side, uh, less powerful one, is going crazy with it. 
So that's kind of the temperature in play. Uh, we are getting a little bit uh, variance in the answers and obviously. But you can see that, that the token generation, that's mostly affected by the power here. So the token generation is still much faster on the uh, right side. Now we are actually getting similar answer on the right side as we are getting on the left side. Let's do a conversation here. So uh, main thing here is that uh, both are faster than with Pi 3 and right side is way faster. So um, very lean model plus Raspberry Pi 5 plus active cooling. And of course, uh, my, my SSD is slightly in play as well. So right side is getting some IO benefit, but uh, LLM is more kind of CPU or rather GPU bound. And in this case, we don't have GPU. Uh, we, we are not using GPU, so it's all CPU speed. So raw performance, a little bit of IO speed, perhaps for the loading parts, especially. Why did I get SSD, by the way? Well. The memory cards with Raspberry Pi suck, so if you keep running it for a few years, it will fail, and it's always going to be, be way slower, so that's why I got SSD. Hard drive, a real hard drive, this allows me to do more interesting projects. And by the way, I was spending, I wasn't kidding, I was spending the ad money I'm getting for, for my channel. I think it's uh, fair that if uh, you watching my videos is... Uh, kind of uh, giving me some benefit. I get some checks from YouTube now and then. I'm, I'm going to blow them on things that I'll share on my channel, because why not? Why not? I love gadgets anyway. Okay. So left side is still crunching out, but granted it's giving me even actually a little bit of code. But as you can see, right side was still uh, unscientifically speaking about double the speed. So I think that's good enough. So I think uh, I in uh, I hope you enjoyed my video. I already told you what to do. Remember the buttons. Rem remember the feedback and comments. I hope this was interesting for you. Uh, I've been kind of keen on running a local model, and uh, this made up my mind. So I am going to set up my uh, new Raspberry Pi 5 unit with Home Assistant with all Llama and uh, the nice local model capabilities. And then I'm going to exploit the heck out of all this. So um, I'm going to see what I can do. But I, I will be running Olama 24-7 um, locally from now on. And I'll be seeing what all kinds of craziness and trouble I can get with that. Uh, there's no code to share this time, just kind of my observations and thoughts. But I'm also encouraging that uh, if you are on the fence... Uh, get a Raspberry Pi 5 for your own Christmas present. I did, and those are really fun little devices. And go crazy with it. It's still uh, kind of good value for money these days. I hope, I really wish we had these uh, units when I was a kid. So today's kids have all kinds of fancy, fancy and fun stuff. Okay, thanks for watching this video. See you in the next one, and bye-bye.